Welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast. My name is Mike Matthews. Mike's Daily Podcast. This is a show that I haven't done in a while, and I'm going to tell you why I had the Moderna vaccine, and I started to cry because it made me have all kinds of chills, and then I got all achy, and then I still have some issues, like I got a migraine yesterday. I haven't had a migraine in so long. Mike's Daily Podcast. Since I was in my 30s. That's how long ago it's been since I had a migraine. And I had one yesterday. Thank you. Mike's Moderna. Daily. I blame you. Podcast. Moderna. Yeah. Isn't it odd that I would criticize a vaccine when I have been so like, oh, oh, vaccines are good. Mm-hmm. What? There's nothing wrong with vaccines. By the way, I'm going to list for you all 54 ingredients of the, not the vaccine, but of a Big Mac. Riboflavin alum. There's a little bit of beef. Propylon glycol alginate. Soy lexithin. Ascorbic acid. Sodium citrate. High fructose corn syrup. Soybean oil. Hydrolyzed wheat. Xanthan gum, citrus acid, citric acid, calcium chloride, polysorbate 80, potassium sorbate, datum, whatever the heck datum is. Is that the guy from Next Generation Star Trek? Bread flour and egg yolks. And I haven't had one of those in. I bet you the next time I go on a road trip, I will have one of those, but. No thank you Because let me just put this to you in such a way And that is I'm at an age where I have to eat things In a way that are healthy things for me And here's today's podcast picture In that way The podcast picture today That's a good question Mike Thanks for asking at A-Frame What is it going to (laughs) be? Uh, somebody showed us that their cat They give their cat Meowiwana It's basically catnip Do you know who loved cats Was this guy right here Oh yeah He loved to bark at them cats Those wonderful cats Yes he never He never lived with a cat But loved to bark at him The late great Basil the Boxer I oh, miss him so much I will always say that And yes That gets a little redundant But how about this Nice podcast picture Of the beautiful We have the These Easter blooms As we get close to Oh we passed Easter Gosh I am not keeping track Of what's happening this year We had tax day Last week And it blew right past And thankfully We got another tax day May 17th But Dang It's all flying by so fast uh, this podcast picture taken in Podcast Valley. See it at mikesdailypodcast.com. I have not been feeling well, and I blame it on the Moderna, but I'll have to tell you this, that it, it gave me pause for thought. So I got the chills. I got the shot Tuesday. I told you I was getting it. Went to Pleasanton. Went to the Alameda County Fairgrounds. Waited in line. For about 40 minutes In my car Got my tax stuff ready Because my tax person's in Pleasanton Then drove over there afterwards But I'm waiting And there's all these little stops Along the way where you have to fill out a form Then you hand over the form Then they give you that little card That everyone's Everyone on the right is having a field day with the card Oh! Does that mean the government is going to take control And I won't be able to go anywhere without this card Uh, Geez You're worried about that And you weren't worried about when Trump told you You need to have the federally uh, The federal whatever that thing is On your driver's license The federal card It's the the one that Scott Can't fly anymore I have to get a passport now Just to fly to Florida That's crazy Because I didn't want that federal It's going to be like an extra I don't know how much When I could just get my Driver's license renewed Basically for free And Whatever that that 
government issued thing and they don't they don't make a single peep about that but whoa I get a card after I get vaccinated and they, they may not let me into certain places without the card please oh I you know what this is my podcast and this is what I do is because I work with conservative talk show hosts and this is my little venting post where I get to say look your your talking points are thin stop it come up with something very important and worth all of our time to talk about not this conspiratorial crap please anywho i've been not feeling well lately because maybe because of the moderna and I was the first one to say the vaccine Everyone should get vaccinated And I, I don't like anti-vaxxers And I still don't But this is just a little Somebody told me You know what, your body's fighting off It's now fighting off stuff And maybe you had the coronavirus last year I know I got sick before everybody Was talking about the coronavirus Before it, I think it was just starting to be talked about in China I came down with something really nasty And this is before we were all Locking down and shutting down And all that And I got I got something I don't know what it was But I did not feel well And It could have been that Maybe the Moderna Somebody told me that if you feel sick with the first shot You might have had COVID This guy that I know that had COVID He got the first shot and didn't feel good People that have not had it Fly through with flying colors They're flying Me, not so much So I got the chills I felt achy And nasty Like I was coming down with something And then I woke up in the middle of the night And I start thinking about work And I start thinking about all the stuff That's bugging me about work And I'm seriously I'm seriously thinking about Making a life change Because there's stuff at work that's bugging me And there's stuff That I I don't know for the Long haul if I can continue on For the long haul I'm an easygoing guy I like my job For the most part I like my job But there's just some things as I've mentioned on this show In the past It's fine when you're dealing With stuff that doesn't vary much Right As we go outside a cafe anyway We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valleyton It's the variables that throw us off It's the commute to work Who's gonna drive slow in front of me today It's the stuff at work Who's going to be Inconsistent and weird and moody today It's the technical stuff at work What is my computer gonna work at work do I have to deal with technical problems today? It's all that variable stuff. And that happens with every job. But there's more and more stuff being thrown on me these days. And I don't know for the long haul if this is something that I'm capable of doing. I'm in my 50s now. People, previous holders of this position, people who have done the job that I have, the people before me that have done this job that I'm doing now. One guy had a stroke He didn't die But he was incapacitated for a while And had to have some serious surgery about it And still has not fully recovered Another guy went nuts Had to be arrested I heard one guy died Like On and on There's not. It's not a good track record For the job that I have So not feeling good With the Moderna shot Made me think about What What am I doing for the long haul? Is this something I want to keep doing? Because seriously, Mike Matthews has some options. Mike Matthews has a lot of options in front of him. And he's not getting any younger. And maybe there's some other stuff in life he'd like to do. Overall, Mike Matthews is very happy. He has his lovely lady friend who you heard on the last podcast. He's got a lot of friends. A lot of his co-workers are really awesome people. But there's the occasional person That just weasels their way Into his life that makes it, Throws it all off 
And I'm not saying that's someone at work. I'm not saying that's a family member. I'm not saying that's someone who lives down the street from me. That's just something happening. And yeah, we all got to deal with that. That being said, I love the fact that here are, you know, people criticize the uh, people on the right, particularly, criticize the COVID lockdowns. And it's funny because the same I you do your own survey. This this is you will find the exact same thing I am. The people that make all the lockdown criticisms, like, oh my god, that state locked down just because of a little coronavirus. They get the coronavirus. Just look at the former president. Look at all the people around him. Look at like uh, most of the um Conservative talk show hosts have had the coronavirus. I and it's so funny because they'll talk about oh I had I had a couple sniffles. No, you know what? If this Moderna thing that I had this vaccine shot was supposed to show me a little bit about what I could have had, like a little potential side effects were symptoms. I I, I didn't want. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. So, I mean, criticizing Biden. Because he's a little worried that we have We still have the coronavirus That's completely criticizing Fauci Criticizing everybody That says, you know Gavin Newsom, oh my gosh Well, he killed businesses Alright, I don't agree with that But that's still like (sighs) I'm gonna keep wearing my mask uh, I, but I will tell you that I did not feel well after the Moderna shot. Okay, so let's just say Mike Matthews decides to quit his job and retire early. <laughs> not a smart idea, but let's just say he he uh, did. Okay, so there is this person named Susie Orman, and I have produced in the past. A financial talk Financial radio guy His show Rob Black Very nice guy I've worked with him now For about Six years And he likes to make fun of her But let me read something That she wrote That was in the Costco connection A woman asked about her husband's plans To cash out both of their 401ks To pay off their home As they near retirement Although I believe that paying off a mortgage before you retire is a sound move, using up all of your retirement savings is financially risky. Here's what I would ask her before taking this drastic step. If your 401k is traditional, not Roth, do you realize 100% of the money you withdraw from a traditional 401k is taxable? Making a big withdrawal can bump you into a higher tax bracket and taxes can take a big bite out of what's left. I would say Rob Black would agree with that. I would say that most financial people would agree with that. Let's say you need $100,000 to pay off your mortgage. Uh, If you are in the 22% tax bracket You will need to withdraw around $122,000 To pay the t- What? Wait, what? Ah, oh, tax brackets, my friend Is your home a fit for an older you? Take a clear-eyed look at whether Your current home is a good place to get older Is there lots of stairs? Lots of upkeep? Both become harder to navigate as you go Somebody pointed out And this guy is really conservative He said, you know what? Don't worry about that whole staircase thing As you get older, just put in an elevator (laughs) He goes, you would be surprised How cheap an elevator is Yeah, but what if it breaks down? And that is so ironic That Prince died in an elevator, isn't it? When he had that song, Let's Go Crazy And when the elevator tries to break you down Go crazy that's what he wrote oh. By the way, he's coming out with an album Even though he's gone uh, His album has a lot of material that was never released And then it's also going to have a DVD Of a concert he did that was never released In 2011 
And he does all of his classics But then he does other people's stuff And I find it interesting He does a song by Roxy Music And he does a song by NDRE And I don't know what songs they are But that fascinates me Prince And if you have still have not seen it Everybody probably has On YouTube there is One of the last performances he did Where he did While My Guitar Gently Weeps And there he is on stage With also someone who is no longer with us Tom Petty And Jeff Lynne who wrote the song with Tom Petty Free Fallen and did one of the best albums Tom Petty ever did Full Moon Fever Which by the way is a It's just a Tom Petty album Even though members of the heart uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers Some of the Heartbreakers perform on the songs But it is labeled just as a Tom Petty album But that album is phenomenal And it's got great videos I finally watched the video to Free Fallen the other day And I love it because It was done in the late 80s And I grew up in the San Fernando Valley Was in the San Fernando Valley in the 70s and early 80s And I see some of the spots that I remember as a kid And then he did the great animated video for Running Down a Dream He did the video with Ringo Starr, George Harrison Yes, half of the Beatles are in the music video for I Won't Back Down as well as the guy from the Heartbreakers His guitarist and, and Jeff Lynn Who produced it and co-wrote with him He has a great song called You're So Bad That has a funny video Oh, he was so great Tom Petty So Prince So Prince died in an elevator Anyway, Cafe Anyway Outside of Cafe Anyway Somewhere in Podcaster Valleyton If you aren't in an area with terrific public transportation or ride sharing Think not just about your own ability to drive But your friends as well Will they be able to visit it as often One of the cool things about where I live in Podcastro Valley Is I got two buses that pass by me Once an hour At the top of the hour Or the end of the hour However you look at it It's at the It's at the beginning of the hour There's two buses One going one direction One going another So in some ways I don't think I'd ever want to sell this house And I love the Bay Area And if I sold the house I would have to find somewhere else to live And it's going to be probably more expensive Can you cover your essential fixed costs From guaranteed income If you have enough guaranteed income To cover the bills today Susie Orman's next question is What about 20 years from now Prices rise over time That's true Without any retirement savings How will you cover rising costs If you're a 20 something Time is your greatest advantage When it comes to investing If you invest $500 a month Starting at age 25 And you have more than one point You will have Check this out You will have, if you do that, $1.3 million by the age of 65, assuming a 75% annualized return, which is what financial advisors try to get you, is that 7% return. Your contributions will total $240,000 over the 40 years. The rest will be earnings on your money. But let's say you wait until you are 45 to start saving To land at 65 with the same $1.3 million You will need to save $2,500 a month Dang (laughs) That's a total of $600,000 over the 20 years Fascinating Thank you Susie Orman Okay Here I wanted to point this out Let's say you're working somewhere That you uh are thinking about leaving That maybe was the topic Earlier in this podcast Clinginess And oh one thing about this vaccine That I hate Is it, it, it gave me a migraine yesterday I haven't had a migraine since my 30s And And I feel like my eyes are going weird I don't know if, it, if that's a thing Of the Moderna But I just I've had Weird sensitivity to light Lately That may have caused the migraine I don't know what But hey If you need a little music to soothe you, you After you've had the first vaccine Or the second 
And I know lots of people who have been fully vaccinated by now. And that's just amazing to me. That's great. That says to you conspirators out there, you conspiracy theorists, you are so in the minority. And maybe that's why you all cling together. Because you're like, oh, the, the, the mainstream media doesn't talk about this stuff. I'm privy. I'm smart. And everybody's stupid. But just keep this in mind. Is everybody else is completely thinking you're an idiot. And you need to get with the program I mean I wish I didn't have this Migraine Or these migraines that pop up Now Or I I only had one I kind of felt like I was going to get one today But it didn't happen But at the same time I don't want the coronavirus Okay Clinginess is a type of adherence That prevents one from releasing something Out of one's hand Or off one's fingertips Yes Oh and today by the way is FF episode 2234 2234 And yes we have not been As daily as I would like to be With this podcast And that is mainly because Yours truly got a little bit sick From that Moderna This week So I will try to be more regular with the podcasts But catch all the past podcasts at MikeSillyPodcast.com And catch that link to listen to that show that I'll be doing My music show from 9am to 4pm Pacific Time Tomorrow and every Sunday There's a link to where you can listen to that online At MikeSillyPodcast.com So Clinginess is a type of adherence that prevents one from releasing something out of one's hand Or off one's fingertips Like a light piece of paper or a cellophane wrapper that stays attached Or duct tape One might shake one's hand But static electricity or an adhesive allows it to persistently hang on If one attempts to remove it with the other hand, it clings there too Clinginess is a good thing when applied as a part of a wrapping or package But it becomes a nuisance when it's not performing according to its original purpose Often, failure and success behave in the same way For example, letting go of failure is something we have been told to do Releasing and forgetting it so it no longer impedes us is good advice And we get it Moderna Uh, Who's here today? Oh, that's why I have a root beer next to me The brewmaster poured it already Thank you, brewmaster We'll talk to them in a moment And Often failure and success behave in the same way For example, letting go of failure is something we have been told to do Releasing and forgetting it So it no longer impedes us Is good advice and we get it We have all failed at something And letting failure drag us down is self-defeating But not letting go of success Can also be self-defeating Moving on isn't easy Particularly when A success has contributed to the formation of our self-image And how we view the present and future Future Or the future The future Motivational speakers have made a great deal of money Helping people let go and move on from career and family setbacks Divorce, job loss, and even someone's death But I, and by I, I'm speaking from the first person E. Arthur Self, Ph.D., who wrote this book, Good Success, Learning Good Lessons from Bad Leaders. So E. Arthur Self says, I, 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 like to thank you for giving me the best day of my life But I have yet to hear a motivational speaker insist that one move on from success uh, Past successes become illusionary and more difficult to turn loose than a failure 
supervisory level leaders are apt to cling to success as much, if not, than those in the C-suite or boardroom. But there is no level of an organization at which clinging to success for too long remains an effective strategy. When clinging to success becomes a behavior for lower level leaders, operational stagnancy could result. Who hasn't heard the phrase, but we've always done it this way? Depending on a past success has a tendency to percolate both upwards and downwards within the organization or institution. Clinging to the right things for too long makes them wrong. Wow. That's, you know, I meet a lot of people like that in show business. You know, I once performed on stage with Molly Ringwald. Or... I once had a five-minute conversation with Jane Wheedland from the Go-Go's. Which is true, I did. And I, all I said to her was I had watched her music video that she had just come out with. And she said, thanks. And that's what... So why? That's not success, Mike. I don't know why I went that direction. Jane Wheedland. You know, she... Was in the movie Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure She played Joan of Arc Alright That's all to say Thank you so much for listening to this podcast today We're outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcast Valleyton. Hi Mark It's Benito the Rodeo Queen How you doing? That's a disgruntled fiddle player Tell you what What? I once was on a horse And it took me to a destination Wow Holding on to success. Isn't that great? Look who else is here. Oh, man, can I make the least rip your hair surrender? Oh, man. Yay. Yeah. The person that does the whole uh, thing at the end of the show, A-Frame, she was a theater major at Berkeley. And she said, she told me, I... Do not like taking these classes Because they're taught by these people That are failed actors And they basically get up there On stage and talk about how they They're big success stories Which all they Maybe they were on stage Once at some place and, and, But what have you done lately basically And they're Teaching a class Those who can't, who can't teach But hey people need to be taught It just take the Stupid Stories out Except if they're about Jane Wheedlin And having a great Conversation about Jane Wheedlin was in the go-go She actually sings the song Um Is it the, the Our lips are sealed I think she sings in that one Next show it's going to be The wonderful Matt Rudevega Valentino And Bison Bentley you can tell me what you think about any of this. 336MM daily, 3 plus 3 equals 6MM is in Mike Matthews daily, isn't what this podcast will try to be from here on out. Oh, quick, two new s- stories, real quick. House Republicans America First Caucus was ended by Georgia GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene today, just one day after its policy proposal was first shared online. Greene, alongside Republican Representative Paul Gosser of Arizona, confirmed the co-creation of the America First Caucus yesterday. Later that day, America First Caucus a leaked America First Caucus proposal shared by Punchbowl News Drew widespread criticism and outrage The group's seven page policy document Calls for a common respect For uniquely Anglo-Saxon Political political traditions And an architectural style That benefits The progeny of European architecture In a statement to CNN On Saturday afternoon Green's spokesperson Nick Dyer said that she is is not launching anything. The congresswoman wants to make clear that she's not launching anything. This was an early planning proposal and nothing was agreed to or approved. She didn't approve that language and has no plans to launch anything. Hmm. This according to Newsweek. Representative Matt Gates of Florida announced that he would join the caucus yesterday. In a tweet, he said, I'm proud to join... Uh, Green 
in the America First Caucus, we will end wars, stop illegal immigration, and promote trade that is fair to American workers. The America First Caucus proposal was immediately met with criticism from lawmakers on both sides of the political aisle. Democrat Representative Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois said, It sounds like the Ku Klux Klan caucus to me. Hmm. And... There was a plane, speaking of Florida and Matt Gates, a plane, a World War II area aircraft was forced to make an emergency landing in the ocean during the Cocoa Beach Air Show today. And it was a war, a part of a warbird parade. It was a TBM Avenger. It had a mechanical issue and the pilot was able to bring the plane down close to the shore. The video is pretty interesting. Rescue personnel were immediately on the scene. The pilot was okay. Video shows the plane drifting down over swimmers before splashing into the ocean right in front of spectators. No injuries were reported on the ground or the water. There we go. Next show. Uh, it, yes, it's going to be Matt and Rudy Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Thank you for listening. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.